Hello, everyone, and uh, thank you so much for joining us for today's Rural Outreach and Innovation Talk, uh, which is brought to you as part of the European Microfinance Platform. Um, during these ROI talks, as we like to call them, uh, we showcase the latest trends in rural developments by sharing ideas, experiences, and just different inspirational stories. So today, we are fortunate enough to be joined by Justin McCauley, uh, who is a global digital finance, financial systems architect from Vision Fund. Um, Justin is going to talk to us today about a product that Vision Fund has implemented, uh, which automates the application process for loan officers in the field. Uh, the technology draws from data from over 80 different sources and uses an algorithm to create loan appropriate terms uh, to the given financial situation of individual clients. As a little bit of background information, uh, Justin has 30 years of experience in creating, selling, and implementing various bean tech solutions. Uh, to solve retail banking problems. Uh, for the last 13 years, he's focused on mobile banking and payment technologies, and he's also worked extensively with banks in Europe, North America, Asia, and Africa. So he only has three more continents to go. Um, while working with banks in India, he actually decided to devote his, to devote his time to working with uh, different financially underserved communities. And since then has been working on uh, digital technologies that lead to increased financial inclusion. Uh, so that's a little bit of background information about our presenter today. So Justin, thank you very, very much for joining us today and, and giving us this presentation. We're all really excited. So please go ahead and begin whenever you're ready. Excellent. Uh, okay, so a little bit about the Vision Fund. Uh, you probably know our parent organization, you may know us, but um, we are part of World Vision, the International Relief and Development Organization. So we're essentially the microfinance bank within Vision, uh, sorry, within World Vision. So Vision Fund's active in, well, 31 countries right now. Our mission is really to reach out to rural customers. Um, urban customers are pretty well served in most of the uh, regions that we work and so our mission is particularly to reach out to uh, the rural uh, smallholder farmers in particular um enough about that you can come back to this slide we've only got 15 minutes so i'll let you read this at your leisure um we're starting from quite a high water mark in vision fund so we have already implemented um or are implementing everywhere that it makes sense for our customers uh, SMS, mobile banking technology on simple phones, and we're also integrated where, it, again, where it makes sense, mainly East Africa and coming along now in Cambodia, integration to mobile money networks provided by third parties such as mobile operators. So we're already providing all of that for our customers, and we have, uh, we're well through the rollout now, of actually providing tablets for our officers, and it's in that area that this discussion is mainly centered. So let me go there. Um, we have rolled out, I'm sitting right now, you may hear a lot of background noise, but I'm sitting in our office in Arusha, Tanzania, uh, which is where we first started a rollout of tablet technology for our officers. Um, so everything used to be done on paper. We now have provided a tablet solution that was built for us by one of our vendors uh, for capturing customer KYC and registration information and for taking loan applications on the tablet. So it really is um, a replacement of paper forms with a tablet-based application that works offline, so the officer doesn't need to be connected to the internet. Um, they go out to the field, they capture all the information, and this application, you can see on the screen now, you've got some green uh, and yellow indicators. So once they have put in all the information about a customer's business plan, cash flow, income statement, balance sheet, etc., this will actually calculate some affordability ratios. And if everything is green or maybe some ambers, then we're good to go. But if things are red, then we're going to have to change something. We're going to have to reduce the size of the loan or maybe even say no. Uh, so that's the... That's what we have done already, and we've been rolling that out since the beginning of this year. Um, we have found that that is enormously reducing the turnaround time for a loan. So this used to be done on paper. It would get back to the office. It would be considered that week a decision would be made. Paper would flow around the place. Customers would sign forms. Uh, so a loan application could take up to three weeks, depending on the size, um, from application time to actual disbursement of that loan. That's now three days. So there's been a huge uh, benefit in that. However, um, when it comes to, this is good for um, sort of peri-urban and urban businesses where you can get uh, income statements, et cetera. However, our mission is for farmers. 
So if we actually look at, you know, what would a typical farm, um, smallholder farmer request in terms of a loan, they say, well, I'd like the loan now. Uh, I'd like it for six. I, I don't have any money, so I won't be able to repay until harvest. So it's a balloon repayment. This is how much I want, and this is what I want it for. I'm growing some beans and I have some men. And we have living expenses as well. So in order to adequately do a loan assessment of that sort of loan, what the officer is supposed to do is actually go through uh, all the information about each crop. So when do these crops get planted, each one of them? How long do they take to grow? So what's the growing time? When's harvest? What's the best and worst price you got last year? So we can figure out how much money you might make at harvest time. And what are all the costs involved? land preparation, uh, planting, fertilizer, weeding, so planting, etc. that's going to be paying somebody or maybe members of your family, planting and the weeding, um, and knowing which months these costs fall. So a well-trained officer, and let's be honest in microfinance, that's a rare thing. Uh, so a well-trained officer doing a proper analysis that would probably take two or three hours to ask all those questions, fill in all the answers, and it doesn't matter whether that's on paper or whether it's on a tablet, it's still going to take a fair amount of time. The added um, complication that the customer service officer dealing with this customer is not a farmer, nor are they an agronomist, so they don't really know the accuracy um, or truth of any of the information that the customer is telling them, and the customer may not even know uh, some of the answers to these questions. And so because we had that, because it takes a very long time, we did this. So as the blurb said at the top of this presentation, um, We've basically built an income profile database for crops. So we took information from our customers, from some of our partners who are buyers of crops and contract um, they, they contract farmers to, to grow crops for them. We've got some agricultural partners, some other NGO partners like World Vision, uh, and information from the markets. And we basically built up a database that said, for this crop in this region, here is the accumulated income per month, per acre, at this, this site for this crop. So you can see, as the, I'm just showing you an example here, the accumulated in February, so January, uh, December is when you start harvesting. January and February is when the price goes up. March, April, May, clearly it drops. And then we're into the end of season and the start of the next season when the costs are highest. So the net income goes into the red. Um, so we built up that profile for each crop so that we could actually make life much more simple for the officers. So now, instead of actually asking all the questions and trying to dig into all the costs, etc., through the tablet and this database, we've actually made um, we've made uh, simple screens in the in the application, where simply you select here is the crop that this farmer is growing, here is the region, and here is the size of the field, how much may. Maize, etc. So you can see examples here for beans in Dodoma, 1.5 acres. Maize in Dodoma, one, one acre. We can add in any other household income they might have um, from any other activities. Uh, so they may have a part-time job or receive some money for the yard in the evening, something like that. And then we can add in household expenses, just as we would do before. But what we end up with on the tablet is uh, a visualization of the customer's cash position month by month from here onwards. And so a customer telling me, for example, that I want I want a loan um, and I want the loan in August and I want it to be six months, that would mean that repayment would be sometime in February at exactly the point when the customer has no money. So the answer if I would like the loan in August, well, no, actually would need the loan in January and maybe we could have a couple of disbursements of the loan in January and March. And the time when you are able to repay best is in September. So we've actually put this, to this tool together to allow the officer to see when is this customer going to have money and when do they need it. And so this is about not just taking the customer's word for it, but about actually getting the right timing for a loan and the right term for a loan. And also um, about when's the right payment, uh, when's the payback time. Um, so this is something that the officers have found incredibly useful. Um, so this is reduced, as you can say, two to three hours of analysis work gets reduced to this. Um, and almost half, so we, we've, since the beginning of the year here, when we really started rolling out tablets um, in total, 
Um, we've done about 3,000 loans using the tablets per se, but more than half of them now are actually being done using this tool. Um, and these are applications for loans. A lot of those will be group loans. So clearly there'll be a lot of actually individual loans within that, but these are applications. And so, yeah, this dramatically reduces the time taken by the officers to actually um, reach a conclusion and reach uh, a loan offering for the customer. So once the customer accepts that, this is all saved in the tablet. Uh, once the officer finds some mobile signal, they then upload this into the server and back at the branch, um, the next stage of, of uh, validation and of loan decision, that's basically the branch manager and the, the branch credit committee, can immediately start assessing this there and then in the same day. Um, and they have access to all the data that got gathered by the officer. So the officer in doing um, the customer registration through the tablet and taking the loan application. They'll take pictures of the customer to prove KYC, pictures of identity documents. They'll take a picture of the field, so you can actually see the field, and they'll have a GPS location of that field and of the customer's home address, and the officer back at branch can actually see that on a map and actually validate with it to where it is. So this is what we've been working on, and we've just started rolling out this um, particular enhancement for agriculture since July, um, and this is where we're now. So we've got a couple of thousand loans now um, registered using this uh, product. And the feedback from officers is they love it. It's far better than the, um, filling in the balance sheets and income statements, etc. And frankly, a lot of our officers aren't very skilled at that work. So giving them a tool like this makes their, their actual estimates a lot more accurate. So we're very pleased with it as well and uh, we've got it here now in tanzania we're seeking to roll it out elsewhere um, as soon as we can one of the biggest issues with this if i go back a couple of slides is this data gathering so it's quite a feat to gather all the data from all these partners and bring it into a centralized database analyzing it once it's there is fairly simple but gathering the data and more importantly keeping it up to date is a challenge and enforcing that it's kept up to date is a challenge because clearly if market prices have moved significantly since you first took this data there is your analysis of the client's needs are worthless um, because that data needs to be kept up to date so since time was short i wanted to stop it there and actually open it up for any questions around the technology or the approach and i'll be happy to take those Thank you very much for the presentation. Uh, yeah, actually, my first question was about the data, uh, a regular data update, but you already like answered that uh, this is one of the major challenges. And yeah, okay, so maybe uh, if yeah, if you if you have some uh, like uh, yes. solutions to these challenges, uh, it could be also interesting to hear <laughs> your opinion how how it was resolved and uh, what solutions did you find maybe for this update database. It is a very good question. So we. Yeah, we started use of this particular aspect of the tool in July. Um, we then discovered in October, just this October, this month, that the information had not been updated since original July. So not much, I think, will have changed. Some market prices may well have changed for crops. It is a challenge, right? That uh, I won't deny it. And do we have a solution for keeping this automatically up to date? No, we do not. So there's very few automatic feeds that we can take that would actually that or and we certainly haven't programmed in any automation of the update so today this is a manual task for an administrator to go um and actually update the tables um but it is definitely a challenge trying to keep them up to date and we do not yet have an automated solution for that uh, okay thank you thank you this is uh, a, a, ca a call out to anybody a call out to anybody providing this sort of information for the countries you work would be it would be a very interesting discussion to have. And my second question is uh, uh, a bit regarding the business process and the decision making. So uh, basically, if a customer, uh, for example, has uh -huh. any other uh, parallel loans, current loans, uh, which uh, obviously uh, could affect his or her capacity to repay. Uh, so uh, uh, in the other income, other expenses section uh, of the application, uh, do you rely upon the information only received from a customer or, or probably a tablet application is supposed to communicate uh, on an online basis with the credit bureau or any other databases and so on? Yeah, very good question. So we have um, part of the decision making, we've taken that information from the customer, that goes back to the branch. What somebody does in the branch is then run a credit check 
against that customer. So that's not yet integrated into the tablet simply because certainly where we are in Tanzania, the main use case is uh, that, uh, sorry, the main situation is that the officer is offline. They're out in the field and there just isn't sufficient bandwidth for them to be running online queries. So currently that query is run back at base. So we take the customer information at face value. Mm -hmm. um, a credit check is run back at branch where we can see, do they have other loans? And then that would be a negative decision made. So certainly from our own organization, we insist um, a customer can only have one active loan at a time, although we will allow, so we, we can have a business loan, but we may also apply a social loan for solar lighting or sanitation, that sort of thing. Um, but for a business loan, we, we enforce within the company one active loan at one time for our customers. And so we will absolutely, if we see that they have another loan from another microfinance institution, that will be a critical part of the credit assessment. But that is something that's done from the branch, not from the tablet today. However, in Cambodia, our solution, where they're, they're more likely to be online, our solution does do a credit check from the tablet. So when we take enough registration information from the customer to satisfy the credit bureau, um, the officer actually runs the credit check and decides at that point, looking at what they see, whether it's worth going any further with this customer at all. So it's a nice way to shortcut a no decision. Yeah, uh, thank you. Thank you, Justin. Very clear and especially interesting about the example of how it works already in Cambodia. Thank you very much. Thank you, Dimitro. I believe uh, well, Francis had a question. Yeah. Uh, thank you, Justin. Uh, very interesting stuff. Uh, I have two questions. How do you keep the loan records? Do you keep it still digitally? Because in many countries, regulators would still like to have something in printed form. How do you do that? And number two, sure. uh, your disbursements yes. yep. are okay. also done digitally, uh, like online disbursements? Okay, good questions. Um, so let me answer them in turn. So keeping loan records. Um, uh, Francis, oh, I have the same experience as you, which is there are few central banks that have caught up. Um, so if you want to try and enforce a loan um, in law, you need a signed, an original even, signed loan contract from the customer. And so for that reason, here in Tanzania and most of the other countries, we still do. So what will happen is the loan application will be assessed. And if it's approved, then we will actually print that loan contract and a repayment schedule which the customer will sign, and we'll keep that piece of paper in the branch. So that's the only piece of paper we're keeping. There are some other pieces of paper, though. Um, again, because we're a regulated institution here in Tanzania that it's say, uh, and, and are offering savings, uh, the government requires that we have a signed account opening request, so to prevent money laundering, essentially, um, or to discourage it, let's be more accurate. Uh, so we have to keep a signed copy of a customer's request to open a savings account just so that we can prove that this wasn't opened by somebody randomly but that somebody actually requested this so again at customer contract signature time we actually take that piece of paper as well so we have two pieces of paper stored in the branch in a file unfortunately which are against that customer and that's for the purposes of regulation and for audits by the regulator so the nature of the audits of the regulator is they will turn up at a branch and say show me proof for this random customer that you that, that they asked you to open an account uh, and show me any records you have relating to it. So it's a combination of pointing them at the screen. We are moving wherever possible, and wherever possible means East Africa and, few, and a few others right now um, in Southern Africa. We are moving completely to mobile disbursements. Okay. So in Tanzania, 95% of our loan disbursements are in mobile. Okay. Some of our larger loans, where it it would breach the the limits of the mobile uh, money of, of the mobile money system for a single transaction, we will disperse as a check. And for some farmers who are extremely remote and simply don't have phones, we still offer um, a correspondent bank solution where we put money into a bank that is near them and then give them an authority letter to go and withdraw it. That we want to remove completely. Uh, because it's hard now these days to find a farmer who doesn't have a phone in East Africa um, and who has not heard of mobile money. So, yeah, our aim in the end would be customers receive loans 
via uh, via mobile money and the repay loans via mobile money and repayment by mobile money is the only thing that we're accepting here in Tanzania right now. So we've gone almost completely cashless and we saved a lot of money as a result over the last couple we've been we've been using the mobile solution for the last two years and we have saved a lot of money as a result of it in just uh, accounting and handling in the branch. Thank you. Thank you, Justin. Pleasure. Thanks. Thank you uh, for the question and the answer. Um, does anybody else want to jump in with a question at this point? Are you teaching the technology or are you just giving them the technology? Does that question kind of make sense? Yes, it does. Um, uh, we've come on quite a journey with tablets for officers. Um, as to you know, how should the tablet be owned? Is it a corporate device? Is it a is it your own device that you're using for work and recompensed for it? Um, how quickly can people get up to speed with using tablets? So our our preferred approach right now, after experience, is if somebody hasn't used a tablet before or a computer before, so in some cases then just having a tablet and getting used to what that does and how you interact with it is a bit of an uphill struggle for a few days. Um, and if you then layer on top of that a complicated application that you've got to learn, it's really quite a jump. So our preferred approach is roll out the tablets, give people email. We found that the since email costs money, you know, for corporate email, when we've rolled out the tablets before, but even before we've done it, we found that our officers in every branch are operating on a WhatsApp network. So that's how officers communicate with their boss. That's how they communicate with each other. They're all using WhatsApp on their phone right now. So rolling out the tablet and getting them just used to using the tablet without putting any applications on there specifically for them, but letting them get familiar with the technology, familiar with how much data things use. You know, so if they're on Facebook or watching a video, they suddenly realize all the data has gone. Uh, roll out the tablet first, get them used to it, then roll out the application. And the way we've chosen to do things now is first of all, we, first of all, we'd roll out the application that just does customer registration. So take pictures of the customer, their KYC information, maybe any guarantors or collateral they're going to put up, but then fill in the loan application on paper and take pictures of those loan applications and send it by email to the boss. So that's that's phase one. Just do customer registration and carry on doing the loan assessments the way you were before. Then we introduce capturing the data of the loan application. So we up upgrade the application to include that. And we found this stepwise approach is much easier for the officers to understand. Uh, it also is it's faster to market because you're, you're not waiting for a long time for the application to be developed or configured or changed and then delivered. You're putting out small pieces at a time, which makes sense and add value for the for the users. So that's how we're going about it. Sure, like a, a walk before you run sort of strategy works per makes perfect sense. Oh, absolutely, and you know, and the application you try and make the application as simple as possible, but then you find people are using it differently, and so the training is essential. The training is difficult. Mm -hmm. The training is expensive because it means you know bringing somebody from every branch. And we have a train the trainer approach, so we have a a champion in every branch who has been trained centrally that means bringing them all here for two or three days training them in how everything's used and essentially they end up being the first line of technical support in the branch because a lot of the errors are user errors so the idea is the officer asks the expert in the branch first and if they still don't get satisfaction with the answer then they can start calling uh, the central support unit is there a, another component that comes out with the loans um that that you know of, I mean, I know you work with more of the technology side, so maybe this isn't a super fair question, but uh, is there an an education component, either financial education or or agriculture that comes that the client? Oh yes, sorry, yes, that's all. Sorry, very good point. Um, so yeah, for all the group loans and individual loans, there is training. So the actual business process is. Um, that the registration of a customer may well take place over particularly a group, a group of customers will take place over two or three days that may be spread over one or two weeks um, because particularly for the group clients there is a big financial education package um, here's what you're getting into this is what it means this is what it means to pay back this is what it means if you don't pay back this is why you mustn't borrow for somebody else this is why you mustn't borrow too much etc so we have a full financial education piece that goes on there it's called um, uh, the group financial uh, uh, financial education and 
whether or not the group is ready to take a loan is something that the branch manager goes and does. So if the officer says, I've now gathered all these clients' information, here are their GPS locations, this is physically where they are, they have been trained in what they're getting into, um, before the loan is approved, the, bran the branch manager or the supervisor will go out to meet that group and validate basically whether they believe that these people have been sufficiently trained and they do that by a quiz essentially and by going and talking to each of them so there is a big validation of how are these people ready to receive this did each one of these people actually request a loan themselves individually and um, do we know that <laughs> or is somebody making up somebody who they say wants a loan so yeah that's all that's part of the business process that goes into it. this is simply the technology that allows it to happen a lot faster Perfectly. Interesting, interesting. Um, well, I see we're we're rolling up on our, our time frame, so I think that's uh, I'm afraid that's all we have time for today. So I wanted to thank you to well everyone for for being here and listening to the presentation. Uh, those of you who asked questions, thank you for for those, and I want to send a, a special thank you to Justin for his wonderful presentation and and taking the time to answer our questions and provoke a discussion. Um, I wanted to remind everyone that the Rural Outreach and Innovation Talks are scheduled to continue on November 9th. Uh, and that's when uh, Zainab Saeed of Vision Fund is going to speak to us about uh, designing women-centric rural products. So I hope to see you all there and have a fantastic rest of your day. And thank you once again to everyone.